Okay, so it's uh, one minute past. I think um, Simeon's got a lot to get through today. Um, so I don't want to cut him short, so um, we'll get started. Um, so morning all. Um, as many of you will know, I am Amy, um, and I'd like to welcome you to our Me Too Education webinar. And I'm very pleased to welcome our guest speaker today from the Liverpool Institute of Performing Arts um, to share his experience and practical examples of using Me Too in class. Um, and he's also going to share with us some of the student feedback that he's gathered. So let me introduce uh, Simeon Shuba-Rush. Um, hi, Simeon. <laughs> um, Simeon teaches uh, composition, music theory and oral awareness at Lippa. Um, as a musical director, he has worked on a number of musical um, theatre productions, um, but he's also a freelance trombonist performing internationally for the British Army and as part of his own New Orleans style brass band project. Um, so before I hand over to Simeon, um, I just wanted to again, um, if any of you have joined late, to encourage you to join the Me Too session today. Okay, to make the most out of the webinar, um, Simeon will be demonstrating a few questions via live polling um, and we'll be using some of the Me Too functionality for um, a quick survey and Q&A as well towards the end of the webinar. So um, follow the instructions on screen. As I mentioned before, either go to web.metoo.com and then enter the nine digit ID um, or uh, download our app from Google Play or Apple Store and type in that nine digit ID. So just to make sure that you've all got that ID, it's 196338576. So um, I am now going to um, start to hand you over to Simeon. Um, and as you, um, as we go through the webinar and Simeon, Simeon takes you through his content today, please do ask um, questions via the Me Too app. Um, that's the second tab of the app. Um, and myself or Simeon will answer the questions at the end of the webinar. So I'm gonna sign off now and uh, leave you to have a chat with Simeon. All right, thank you so much, Amy, for the introduction. Hello, uh, my name is Simeon uh, from Lippa, the Liverpool Institute for Performing Arts. Uh, and I'm just going to have a little discussion with you about how I've been using Me Too in my lectures um, to uh, increase student engagement and kind of what students think about it and um, to what level of success that has been. So a bit of background about me. Um, I'm a music lecturer at Lippa and I teach a lot of the kind of dry subjects. So uh, music theory, popular music concepts, um, less of the practical kind of stuff that we do here. Uh, we are fairly vocational on the higher educational spectrum. Um, and my stuff's more traditionally academic. Um, I have quite long two hour lectures, which have normally a queue of students at the end who have questions that they want to ask about things they didn't understand. Um, Research tends to suggest that attention levels drop after 10 to 15 minutes of content in a lecture. Um, and I have a very mixed ability class of 85 students. So quite a large lecture class, um, very mixed ability. A lot of people therefore have questions at the end, as I said. And so I wanted to sort of try and see if we could incorporate some teaching, um, sorry, some technology enhanced learning to improve um, the engagement levels. Uh, the HEA suggests that te uh, technology enhanced learning can maximize the student learning experience. So the plan was to utilize TEL software to try and increase student engagement, as I said, um, and introduced a additional block of classes to test out the software with students. So I didn't introduce it to the main curriculum. I created a new block at the end and had it as a sign up basis for students who wanted to continue their study beyond the kind of standard course. Uh, and I used um, a mixture of focus groups and surveys to get student feedback from those sessions. So uh, for those of you that don't know, I'm just going to introduce Me Too a little bit. Um, well, I'm going to introduce what I use Me Too for. So it's quite similar to Clickers. If any of you have used Clickers, that's kind of the analog version of Me Too. Um, that's kind of like the fastest finger first bit of who wants to be a millionaire, if you can remember that TV game show. Um, it's a web-based application that you can use with smartphones, tablets, and laptops. Um, and students can interact with live polling features to quickly answer questions or give opinions. There's a word cloud feature, which we will have a look at together, uh, which visually presents collective opinions. We have surveys that we can set before, during or after a session. Uh, and I believe Amy's got a survey that she's going to uh, push to your devices after this session. 
Um, and there is also PowerPoint integration, which I'm going to demonstrate with you now. Um, there are some preloaded questions, preloaded polls in this PowerPoint presentation. So uh, if you haven't joined already, and this code is at the bottom of every slide, um, as Amy said, you can go to web.meetoo.com and enter the meeting ID. So my first question to everyone who is in the session is, uh, oh, I need to press delete, hang on, there we are, okay. Uh, so how much do you know about Me Too currently? So the options here are everything, quite a bit, a little, I've heard of it, or nothing. So if I push the space bar here, uh, that will open the poll on your devices. So hopefully um, it's open on yours. I can see one person, four people have already responded. So in the top left, you can probably see the response rate. Um, so I'll give that a few more seconds. It's now 22 people in the session, which is very exciting. Thank you for joining me today. Okay, so I'm going to close that poll now, and we'll see currently what you people know about me too. Okay, so quite a mixture. So uh, most of you know a little bit, some of you know quite a bit, and uh, a few people know everything about it. I think a few people who work at me too are in the session. Um, so that probably explains that. So that's interesting. So that's, a, that's one way that I use it um, in classes, in lectures. I can quickly put up a multiple choice question and gauge the kind of response levels perhaps on a sliding scale as we've given here, um, but it can be a, a formal question with a correct answer, which we'll demonstrate next. Um, but before we do that, we'll have a look at the word cloud feature. Um, I wanted to demonstrate how the word cloud feature works with something that we might all know about. Um, and hopefully we all know who the Beatles are. And um, I do work at Paul McCartney's institution, so I thought it was appropriate uh, as I'm uh, doing the webinar from Liverpool that we would have a little look at the Beatles. So what I want you to do is I want you to pick five single word answers um, of words that you would associate with the Beatles and enter them all at once with a space in between each single word. Um, so if you're going to pick a song name, try and pick a one word song name like help or yesterday uh, or use just one name. If you're going to pick a name like Ringo or something or Liverpool or music or whatever. Um, so this is what the word cloud question might look like. And if I start that, that should push to your devices and you can put in your five individual words. So I'm going to do that as well. I'll have a little think about five single word answers. I'll enter them all at once with a space between each and then press send when I'm done. So I'm just thinking what I'm going to say. We've got a few responses already. I'm going to send mine now. Okay, so quite a few of you there. So this allows us to gather kind of definitions or opinions from the room and display them in a different way rather than just having a bar graph going across the page. This is a little bit more visually exciting. And hopefully some of us have picked the same words. So maybe some of us have all picked Liverpool or picked similar names or something, or you might pick something unique. And so it should display in larger font those answers that we have picked together and those in smaller font that are perhaps more unique answers. Okay, just going to give it a few more seconds now. Okay, so should, if I close this, we should get a nice visual representation of the word cloud. It's just taking its time to render onto the screen, hopefully. Maybe I need to press the space bar again, I'm not sure. Oh no. I think I might have lost that. And apparently the sound has gone as well. Can anyone hear me? Um, I can hear you okay, Simeon. So I think I think that part's okay. I think maybe because we didn't might not have cleared the results at the beginning, maybe it's affected the, the word cloud um, running, which is a real shame. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I, I can I can pick that up and um, sort of represent that um, through the dashboard a little bit later. Okay, cool. So we'll have a look at that word cloud later on, because um, I think the results are still there saved into the V2 uh, dashboard at the back. 
Oh, yes, we did do a, a, a webinar test earlier. I forgot to clear the results from our test, which we did. Uh, so, yeah, this might be uh, an ongoing theme, but hopefully not for too long. Um, but, yeah, it just shows that, you know, uh, introducing technology into the, uh, into the lecture room can be a little bit difficult as we do need to know how it works. Um, so we'll talk a little bit more about that later on. So my next question for you then. Uh, this is a, a different type of poll because it's got a correct answer. Um, so a quick quiz for you. Uh, which Beatles song has sold the most copies? So there's five options there. I want to hold your hand. Can't buy me love. Hey Jude. She loves you. And help. And so which one do you think has sold the most copies over history? So not an opinion-based poll, but this one has got an actually a correct answer. Okay, so I'm just going to close that poll up now. We should see the results there. Okay, so most of you think that it is Hey Jude, which is interesting. If I press the space bar again, we should get a tick next to the correct answer, which is She Loves You. So She Loves You is actually the one that sold the most records. Um, although those of you that picked Hey Jude aren't far off, as that is the highest stream song on Spotify. Um, and so it's, uh, in contemporary terms, probably one of their most popular songs, but She Loves You has sold more records, which is quite interesting. So yeah, so that's an opportunity to you know quiz students perhaps with a, a correct answer, and you can visually give the tick as well so that people who got the answer correct um, know so, which is good. Okay, so what do the students think who I've been using this with? So 90% of the students that I polled uh, rated the software as four star or five star. Um, and then I gave them a few statements and they could, on a scale of strongly agree to strongly disagree, um, let me know what they thought about the following statements. So here are some of the interesting ones. Um, using Me Too on my device is easy and user friendly. 97% of the students that I used this with um, found it was, they agreed, they agreed with that statement that it was um, easy and user friendly, which I think is good. I think um, our students that arrive now have quite high expectations of technology use in lectures. Uh, me Too helps me stay engaged in lectures. 80% agreed with that one, which I think is quite positive. It is dangerous to encourage the use of internet-enabled devices in the classroom as other notifications such as social media can be distracting. 35% agree with that one. So not an overwhelming majority, but still something to be concerned about, that if you start introducing different devices that have other things going on on them, uh, people can get distracted in lecture rooms. Uh, Me Too is a gimmick that doesn't really add anything to the lectures that can't already be done without technology. Only 80% agree with that. So 92% of the people that I polled, the students that I polled, thought that it did actually add something that couldn't be done without the technology being used, which I thought was quite interesting. And we'll have a look perhaps at the reasons why for that in the following slides. The most interesting one for me was Me Too is useful for helping me improve my own learning. And 85% of people strongly agreed or agreed with that statement, with the other 15% were undecided or neutral on it. But that's quite interesting. It's kind of empowering the students there um, and giving them some control of their own learning. Perhaps if I polled them on a question that I've been teaching them for 20 minutes and they got that question wrong, that might mean to them, oh, I need to go and do some further private study. I've got something else that I need to do personally. And so it was quite good for them, as well as useful data and interesting data for me as a lecturer. So here are some of the positive free text comments that they gave. Um, it's engaging and makes me focus more on what's happening in the class. So as I'm involving them in the class, rather than just talking at them for a couple of hours, um, it was quite good that they felt a little bit more involved and more focused because of that. I like the fact that it's interactive and that I can test my knowledge without being scrutinized. Um, I mean, I have the data, so I might scrutinize it personally afterwards, but there's no kind of pressure, not the same kind of pressure you get when you put your hand up and answer a question, perhaps in a lecture. Um, the chance to try and answer about the pressure of getting it wrong, very similar. Interaction is more interesting than being spoken to or at for an hour. Perhaps that says something more about my lecture style. Maybe I was just speaking at them for a couple of hours, but now it's a little bit more interactive. Uh, that not only is it fun, but it engages with the material being taught as I'm actively participating. So generally, people thought a little, they were quite more engaged with it. They found it interesting. It was something that kind of broke up the talking, broke up the kind of standard kind of lecture situation. 
Um, some of the negative free text comments that I got, um, you can get distracted by other things on your phone, as we discussed. Uh, maybe how silly it can be at times, like in the messages bit, which is more so the other users of the app rather than the app itself. So yeah, that was quite interesting. Um, I think in the first session I used it, we had a lot of people joining with funny names. You seem to have all joined with your actual names, or I assume they like actual names. I did have Barack Obama joining one of my sessions, um, and Paul McCartney was down in a couple of them as well. Um, and I don't think he was actually there. So um, I think that's quite interesting. Um, but they got over that quite quickly. The novelty of kind of, um, you know, being silly with names um, or writing using emojis in the chat, because you can use emojis in the chat. Maybe one of you will use an emoji now um, to demonstrate that. Um, that kind of novelty wore off quite quickly. Uh, people who come late will miss the joining code. Uh, that's something I've learned from now uh, myself. And so I put the joining code at the bottom right of the slides, uh, as you can see there. So you don't have to, uh, if you are, if you do enter the lecture theatre late, you don't miss out. And then there were some negative comments about the name. Of course, the Me Too movement um, has uh, got quite some negative connotations about what's going on. I see someone's just used an emoji there, a few emojis in the chat, which is good. Um, so yeah, that's something you know, something to be aware of. Aware of, although it is uh, M double E T double O, and it's more meet too, like make your meetings better rather than me too. But who knows? Um, let's continue. So some of the main benefits that I can see are that it empowers teaching staff. It helps us to gauge the understanding levels of the room quickly, even within larger group settings. And what that allows me to do is that allows me to therefore be a more reactive teacher. So I can react to the results in the moment. I can change the way I explain things. If 90% of the students I just taught a topic on got the question wrong, maybe I didn't explain it very well. Maybe I can improve that, use a more contemporary example or explain it in a different way. But it also empowers the students. It gives students increased agency over their own learning, as we were discussing previously, uh, and it increases student engagement, especially from shy students. In my lectures, I have the same couple of hands going up a lot of the time, so it's quite nice to have an increased engagement level. So that was pretty good. Some other possible benefits that are kind of perhaps less exciting sounding than those. Um, in my institution, it could be good for instant and anonymous module evaluation feedback forms. So at the end of a module, um, rather than having paper forms or some kind of online web form that they have to go to a link, you could send it to their phones in the session, get anonymous feedback without their names attached to it, which is one of the options in the settings. We did choose this uh, session that you're in now to have names attached to it, but you can also have completely anonymous sessions. So that can be a good thing. Um, you can set questions for outside class completion and have a look at the data afterwards, which is quite good. You can track student progress over a semester or year. Um, there is uh, an Excel export uh, button, uh, which gives you a nice spreadsheet of the data. And if you have questions with correct answers, it even automatically colors in the cells green or red to show whether the student got the answer correct or wrong, which is quite good. And you can track you know, 10 questions over a session or indeed between sessions, you can create lots of different interesting data that you can analyze. And you can tra track student progress within a class with comparison polls, which we'll have a look at, although um, hopefully, that, hopefully that will work. We'll have a look anyway. Um, and it could replace some virtual learning, learning environment based assessments and components. So reflective logs or things like that, which might seem quite onerous or strange. We could perhaps make it a little bit more accessible with using technology such as Me Too. So some limitations and threats, you can probably guess where I'm heading with these, with the pictures I've used, um, but there are some ethical concerns about accessibility and affordability. We can't assume that all students um, turning up at level four of a higher education program are going to have a smartphone, a laptop or a tablet. Um, so we do need to consider those things. It's not suitable in all classes. Uh, it works really nicely for me uh, in a large lecture, it, and it does work quite well in small seminar groups, but perhaps on one-to-one -one basis in tutorials, you're not really going to use it. Um, some more practical classes have used it in quite interesting ways. There's been some quite innovative ways of using it in theatre and drama workshops, um, which I'm sure Amy can tell you about because she's been telling me about some of those at other universities. Um, so there are some ways to use it creatively as well. Uh, it can come across as a bit of a gimmick. I don't use it for every session, but when uh, I feel like it's going to add value, I use it. Um, encouraging internet-enabled devices being used in a lecture theatre could lead to more distractions rather than better engagement. As we discussed, it's that balancing act between 
is having Facebook notifications on your phone at the same time as trying to engage in a lecture um, doing more harm than good. Dodgy Wi-Fi is something to be aware of and battery power for devices is something that can often let us down. So they're things to consider. Uh, and as we discussed, naughty students. Um, not every student is well behaved. Some people, uh, as I said, the majority of my students were very well behaved and, and got over the, the initial jokes quite soon, but you never know um, when that might come up. So some final thoughts. Uh, in the age of massive open online courses, um, do bricks and mortar universities, the more traditional universities need to adapt in order to be the best of both worlds. Um, I did actually complete a blog post for me to kind of on this topic um, and it did get posted on Monday, so perhaps you can check that out, but looking specifically at how can we take the best bits of what MOOCs do well and bring it into what we do well at traditional universities. And what we do well at traditional universities, according to the Office for Students, is that we know our students, we're passionate about the topic and we can offer them one-to-one -one support through tutorials. If we bring in some of the kind of good elements of engaging elements of technology into the traditional lecture room, could we create a best of both worlds environment? Active learning, according to research, is a significant factor in student success. So involve the students in the learning process, don't just talk at them. And this is quite a nice way to do that um, in quite a digital age way. Students had disappointedly low expectations of staff digital literacy. Staff do need support and PD training um, for when things go wrong. So a couple of things have gone wrong in my session already today, um, and hopefully uh, we will fix those later. I think Amy will be able to show our Word Cloud results uh, at the end of this session. But yeah, um, we do need training. I haven't been trained on this properly. I've just picked it up and had to go. It's very user friendly, um, but you do come across odd quirks like we did today. So uh, I'd like to demonstrate how you can use it live within a lecture, within a session like this. So I'm actually gonna go out of presentation mode and show you what my PowerPoint looks like. So um, in the PowerPoint session here, you can see the kind of usual file home insert tabs along the top. And there is a Me Too tab if you download the Me Too PowerPoint plugin, which currently um, only works on Windows versions of PowerPoint. Um, I am using a Mac, so I am running Windows on my Mac in order to do this. Um, so there are workarounds um, for those of you that are Mac users, but it's uh, good just to know that it is primarily for the Windows version of PowerPoint. So in that tab, you can see these buttons along here, um, and it's quite simple. If I wanted to add a question, so if you go to Add Poll Slide, I could add poll on a new slide. And I can type my question. So uh, this will be a multiple choice one. Which color is best? And your options are red, green, or blue. OK, it's not going to be a correct answer, so I'm not going to set one there. I just click Add. And it will prepare a new question slide in that format. So there we are, that's what it looks like before we hit go. So I'm going to now jump back into the slideshow on that slide. Just going to initialize the question. Okay, and all I need to do to start the polling is press the space bar. And so now that question should all be on your devices, and we can select which the best color is in the world. Here we are. I don't think we'd be doing this today, but we're going to find out what the most popular color is in this group of 26 people. Okay, so I'm going to close that poll now by pressing the space bar again. And there we are. So blue is the most popular one. There we are. So any Everton supporters amongst Merseyside football fans would be pleased with that result there. Um, and that's how straightforward it really can be to just add in a poll into a presentation. So perhaps you've learned something. So I'm going to ask the same question again. How much do you know about Me Too now? So if I open that, perhaps you might have, you might know a little bit more after this presentation about Me Too. So maybe there'll be an improvement. And I'm just going to close that off now. We'll see those results. So you see if there's perhaps a movement from a little to quite a bit. Yeah, there is, as expected. So a lot of you came knowing a little bit about Me Too. Perhaps some of you know a little bit more about how you could use it uh, in higher education now. And uh, is there any improvement we can see in a comparison poll? So we can see that movement up. So if you ask the same question twice within a lecture session, 
um, you can then do a comparison poll of the answers. So we can see there's a big movement there on the second time you were asked um, from a little to quite a bit. So I think that's quite a nice feature as well with the comparison polls if you want to kind of do a learning debrief at the end. Uh, one final thought for you. Um, I did this presentation at John Moores University in Liverpool and one of my colleagues said students are going to use their phones anyway. This is an opportunity to make the phone an engagement tool and stop it being a distraction tool. Which I think is quite interesting about the potential uh, benefits of using Me Too and using phones. So yeah, thank you very much. Um, I am going to change the presenter back to Amy, I think. So if I do that. That's great. Thanks, Samir. Um, yeah, I will uh, very quickly um, show you the uh, the word cloud that you missed. Um, so you can go into the dashboard and download an image now. Um, so that is a nice export from the dashboard um, of the uh, word cloud that didn't appear. Um, but if things didn't go wrong, we wouldn't learn from them. And, you know, it's technology. It happens. <laughs> So well handled. Um, but yes, we're moving now on to uh, a bit of Q&A. So there has been a couple of questions um, in the um, Me Too Q&A. So if I, if I go through a couple of them, um, we haven't got a lot of time. Um, so Will asked in English or any language. Not quite sure what that refers to. Um, but yeah. referring to the most popular Beatles song because I think they did really uh, Spanish and French as well, so. Um. Uh, okay, <laughs> I'm glad you got that one. Um, how many students were in your group um, when you were asking them, you know, what they think? Okay, yeah, so um, I think I had I had around 60 students that um, came to, to that particular session where I did the kind of the conclusion survey, so that's based on, on 60 um, level four uh, music students at Lippert. Cool. Um, I, I think we covered the, um, you know, how did you get around the tomfoolery in um, sort of messaging and free text? Um, so sort of covered that off, I think, and it sort of died down, which is yeah, good. I mean, that kind of naturally moderated itself, uh, as I said, but there is actually a, a moderation function um, in the chat, and you can turn the chat off as well if you want to. So there's there's options there. If you think chat isn't appropriate for your session, you can turn it off. Um, but yeah, the students got over it. Um, and we've definitely had very similar feedback from other lecturers where, um, you know, it, it actually students do self-police it. Um, so um, do you share poll results, uh, poll results or Me Too data with students post-session? Do you make it all available for all if relevant? That was from Steve Roberts. Yeah, um, you, you can do. I think, I think I've... I've shared like word cloud results from students where relevant because sometimes it's good to refer back to them and see what people said i use word clouds a lot for like definitions at the start of sessions which is is really nice way to go like how what words would you use to describe a particular chord or a particular scale or something in music um, and that's quite a nice creative way to see how they would define it rather than me just pushing my own agenda onto the students and sometimes i share that image with them because they like to look back at that and see what they said and whether they still think that after my session and once i've pushed my agenda on them afterwards um so yeah sometimes it's good uh, in terms of the poll results um they can ask me to see them afterwards if they want to see how they did, but most of them keep a kind of a track of like how, how good they were. What's good is I've got the data so I can look back and have a look and mm -hmm. maybe nudge people if I think you might need to have a little look at seventh chords again or something, a topic they're particularly weak at perhaps. Um, well, I mean, one way that I have seen that used as well um, is the Q&A data. So when you get a lot of questions come in, if you don't have time to answer them in the session, People take the questions out, answer them in an, in the Excel spreadsheet, and then share them with the students, which is quite a nice way of using it as well. Um, do you run anonymous sessions so people can't leave a name in discussions? Yes, I, I do run anonymous sessions, uh, and I let the students know. Well, they do know when they log in anyway, whether it's anonymous because it doesn't ask for a name. Um, anonymous is good, um, particularly for the feedback on my teaching and for the module kind of feedback at the end of the semester. It's quite nice to do the anonymous sessions um, so that they know that they can kind of freely, uh, you know, rant about you know the institution or the module or me as a teacher without any fear of me knowing who said it. You know, and they kind of feel honest about it. Yeah. Um, and then there was um, 
not really sort of well uh, will you be showing the beta presentation view um we, we didn't go through that today um but there is um a session on our youtube channel the what's new what's next june webinar which does cover that um and there is actually some releases um or updates coming to that in the next week or two um, that you can watch out for. Um, does the word cloud allow characters such as question mark, hashtag, etc.? Um, there is a profanity filter within the word cloud. Um, I believe if those symbols are inside um, a word, they would appear. Um, but I'm actually not 100% on that. So um, maybe um, if someone from Me Too is on and knows the answer to that, they can reply to it um, and, and we'll include that within the chat thread just, just to confirm what, what happens with them. Um, but there is definitely a profanity, a very thorough profanity filter in there. Um, but obviously it's not going to capture absolutely everything, but there is that there to um, sort of help police things. Um, so yeah, I think that was it for questions. Um, so thank you very much, um, Simeon. Really lovely to hear from you um, and for you to share your use and feedback. So thank you. Um, before we left, I just wanted to point out a couple of new things that um, we've got that some of you may not be aware of, but we've got a new Getting Started video on our YouTube channel. Um, it's quite a long video, 14 minutes, but it's very thorough um, and you can skip to different sections if you go into the details of it. Um, so that's a great one for uh, new staff or people wanting a refresher. We do still run our weekly jump starter on a Tuesday. We've got a new PowerPoint add-in video on YouTube as well um, and a couple of new guides. Um, and uh, videos there for you to have a look at within our website and also on YouTube. Um, so that's great. And obviously Simeon's blog, which um, there's been a link to there if you're interested in reading that. Um, so hopefully you may have noticed a little red dot in your Me Too app. There's a little survey there for you to complete, just a bit of feedback on the session today. Um, please do give us your true opinions and um, anything that you'd like to see from Me Too um, in our future webinars. Um, uh, that would be very kind. But otherwise, I think we have run a couple of minutes over, but only three. So hopefully um, I can see well, you've pretty much all stayed on. So thank you very much for attending today. Um, and thank you for myself and Simeon. Um, and should you have any questions, you can reach us at education at me too.com. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.